Hello, Loveland Magazine viewers. We are here for another segment of What's in Loveland's DNA. And today, we are at Loveland High School Tiger Trail on the track. And our star today, track star, of course, Maya Brines. How are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm pretty good. Now, the reason that she's here today is because she is a reinventing DNA in Loveland as we speak. She's a superstar. I'm looking to see her on the Olympic trials someday. She's going to the University of Iowa to run track and field. I'm thinking the heptathlon is what I heard. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Now, how did that come about? Um, I had like talked to my college coaches and they were like, we see all the events that you're in. We might as well just put you in that because we think that you'll thrive in that the most. Right. And then that just means you're just awesome at everything, right? Uh, I don't know how to answer Pretty that, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, hey, you can have an ego a little bit, okay? You okay. broke some records. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go ahead and take you guys all around, and we're going to have everybody introduce themselves. We have some coaches. We have another star athlete over here, Michaela. Um, so go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Lynn Brandt. I was Maya's sprint coach. I'm Brian Williams. I coach the hurdlers for the boys and the girls. And I'm Herb Loffman. I'm the head girls track coach. Awesome. And Michaela, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm a senior at Loveland High School this year, and I ran uh, hurdles with Maya for a number of years. Now, obviously, you came here today because she means something to you, right? I'm assuming. So tell me why, and why does she inspire you to do what you do? Well, every day that we come to practice, she really has this determination that you can tell when she shows up that we're just going to get work done and we're going to be productive. And you can tell by her attitude that she just breathes track and she's so passionate about it and it really inspires all of um, not only me but the, my teammates. I love that answer and plus you're so young and that was so well spoken I love that. <laughs> now people you're like oh who's Maya Brines why don't you know yet so that's why we're here today so we're gonna talk a little bit about your story um, you started in 2018 with track and field or 2017? I was in seventh grade so okay mm, 2004 15? 15, 15 okay, so, maybe? So 7th grade was when you kind of decided, hey, this is something that I want to do. Why was that? Did you just see that you were fast? Did your dad say yeah. something? I, I know he has a lot to do with your success here. Chad, okay. The funny story is we had like the field day in like 6th grade and there was like a 100 yard dash or something and like I had won my heat and I was like, oh, this is fun. Like I like beating like the boys and the girls. Like I wonder if I could do it. And the signups for track came and I was like, oh my gosh, I should do it. And I actually missed the deadline and came what? home to my mom who was crying. I was like, mom, I missed the deadline for track. So we went to like the lady at the front desk and like called Mr. Waple, who's the middle school coach. And we were like, is there any way we can sign up? And he was like, oh yeah, of course. He's like, I was watching her in sixth grade. So I was kind of hoping that she would come. So that was a funny story. So we always joke about it to this day, but. So that's when you got your start. And yeah. so, in saying that, what was your specialty then? What did you, I, obviously when you're in seventh grade, I didn't even start running till I was a junior in high school. So awesome for you. Um, so tell me what really stood out to you? What event were you like, wow, that is the one I want to focus on. And obviously you're a multi-talented athlete, but what was that one event that you were just excited about? So the funny thing is I only did sprints and high jump and I hated hurdles. I swear it on my life I'd never do it. My dad always said, you should do it. I was like, nope, I'm never going to fall. I'm never going to like risk injuring myself. And then once I got to high school, I was like, hmm, maybe I should just try it for fun. There is a funnier story actually to that. There was a practice that was horrible. Like I was like dead after it. And Coach Williams was like, anyone want to come do hurdles? And we were in lifting and I was like, I'm going to go over there for a few minutes. Maybe I can get out of this for yes, a little bit. Amen. And then he was like, you got to keep doing it. And he was like, it would be a fun opportunity. But that's the only time I've skipped a lifting. I just <laughs> wanted to try something. <laughs> Coach William, so, uh -oh. so I'm assuming you kind of spotted her and you were like, listen, you got to be a hurdler. I guess it went down that way. We were indoor. I know we were in the indoor facility and I know she had went over a couple and it was clear at that point in time. I mean, anybody that's watched this sport for five minutes can see that she had some real natural ability. It's been a lot of fun. Well, what's your background? How did you know that? Like how, I, it's, it's, I mean, for the average person, it's not that easy if, unless you know your stuff. Um, how did you really recognize that she's got it, I think? You know, I think 
all of us coaches have certain clocks in our head. Right. And the jumps coaches have, they can see certain things with their bodies and where they're at in certain positions. And when someone runs by you, I mean, you know, as, if you've been at doing it as long as we have, yes. you can, you can tell, yeah. and uh, you can't, you can't disguise that in any way, shape or form. And when the first couple of hurdles she went, uh, by, over, I looked at her and I said, uh, see you in Columbus, buddy. Yeah. Uh, the first two hurdles. I mean, is this that clear? Wow. It was that clear. Wow. Yeah. And obviously you're the sprinting coach here. You had a lot to do with this too. Cause she's awesome at the 200, right? You were in some relays as well. So how did you kind of spot her talent and how's this journey been with her? I know she's had so much success and she's going to Iowa, which is awesome. How do you feel about, you know, being that person that helped her along the way? Um, so I don't know how much I helped, but maybe a little bit of guidance. Her biggest thing was her starts. And so that's, uh, if I contributed anything to her, it was getting her to keep her foot back in the pedal so that she could explode from the starts. But, um, you know, I've been coaching a lot of years and it's rare that you have an athlete who is totally focused on track and field. Right. And, and Maya was willing to put in the time during COVID. She was up here on the track working out, oh, you know, in hopes of having a season. Dedication. Just, yeah, I mean, you just saw it. And it's, you know, you don't, you don't run into those athletes very often at the high school level. And right. That's why you knew she was going to do great things. Exactly. And what about you? How did you know? <laughs> Obviously, you were like, hey, hurdling coach, sprinting yeah. coach, do your thing. But h how did you kind of, you know, how did your thought process go where, hey, like, she's going to actually do some really big things for our program and break records? Right. And, and that's what's nice about our track program. 7-12, we work hand in hand. So we've seen her since seventh grade. And wow. we were excited. And once she got to high school and first one in the weight room, last one to leave practice, we knew the dedication was there. And my job is just to open doors. She walked through them, and uh, I just stay out of their way. So these <laughs> these coaches did a, a wonderful job with her. So she's a special ath athlete, but uh, they had a lot to do with it in guiding her, and it's been a fun fun trip, fun journey. Man, they're really talking you up over here. So I guess it's time for stat time, right? I guess so. So well, tell me this first. Are you from Loveland? Yes. And you've lived here your whole life? Yes, only when I was little I wasn't from here, but okay. I've lived here 14 years. So. Oh, wow. So she Pretty really is a part of Loveland's DNA, guys. Like, she's been here. She's, you know, imagine if you and when, we'll say when, when you do big things at Iowa, I mean, you're from Loveland. That's pretty cool to say. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, yeah. seriously. So let's 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 take it down these stats. So let's start with 2018. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the stats, right? And you just give me just a little you know, maybe a couple sentences about how that year went for you. So 2018, first team all ECC in a four by one meter relay. Tell me about that experience. Um, it was fun to be on like a team of girls that like also had the same dedication. A lot of them didn't come like future years because they had like, they were soccer players. So a lot of them didn't come, but some of them did come. And it was just nice to have some of those moments with them, like besides having those moments in school. Right. Uh, freshman year was not probably one of my highlight years. It kind of progressed my sophomore year and right. up. So. Right. And, and the thing is, too, and um, believe it or not, I ran in college. I know you can't tell, but <laughs> you don't really grow into yourself yeah. until later, your 20s. Yeah. So you do realize that the best is to come. Like Hopefully, that's when yeah. women peak. Yeah. So. That's awesome. So don't even worry about when you were 14. It happens. You know, it is what it is. So outdoor 2019. And this is a lot, guys, so bear with me. First team all ECC long jump, 100 meter hurdles. You broke the record with a time of 14.7. You got on the podium, finished fourth. And the previous record was actually in 2016. That is nuts. I mean, that's pretty awesome. You made it to state. Um, now, did you make it to state in a relay as well? Because I didn't see that, or did you just focus no. kind of on the 100 meter hurdles? No, so our four by two team only made it to regionals. Okay, and okay. And then we didn't make it from there. Now, did you just focus on the hurdles or did you do any jumping or anything like that as well? It was just the hurdles. Okay. But two other girls also made Caitlin Andrews and Jordan Morrison. And it was crazy, Jordan was a 400 hurdler and it was her first year doing hurdles too and she made it and it was really cool for all of us to like experience that new thing together yeah. especially Jordan and I because she was someone like that I really looked up to right. and someone that taught me how to like dig down deep right. and like really fight for like what I wanted and she just getting that experience like when we both started hurdles being able to like kind of bounce off each other was really cool. And you know what I remember writing that article about you three the 200 the 300 and the 100 I mean that was so special to me three women getting out there and getting it done and breaking records. I mean, is there anything better than that? 
I don't know. Exactly. So the experience was awesome, clearly. Going to state is crazy. Now, was it at Ohio State? Yes. Okay, okay. And, okay, <laughs> that stadium, it's a little intimidating. Sometimes, Just yeah. a little bit. Just yeah. a little. It was kind of intimidating at first, but then Coach Brandt has, like, been there before, so she was able to kind of, like, help me get through that. And something that's weird about me is, like, I've learned. So Caitlin also went, and she was kind of, Eh, about like all the people right. and I was just kind of like leave me alone like I'll go in my own space You're and I'll be zone. fine like right. I'll be okay without right. people like some people need people and I'm like I'm good except there you for go. <laughs> except for my coaches I kind of need them sometimes. there you go but <laughs> now now what did you what did you say to get her ready and to get her you know not so nervous kind of pumped she said that you'd been there before so how did that play out it's just a, it's a, a big confidence boost. You know, you have to walk in and do the same thing you've done every other week of the season. Right. And that's what she went out and did. And, you know, the people around you aren't any better than you. It's a matter of you performing to your best on that given day. There you go. So. There you go. Direct and, you know, motivational. I like it. Okay. So more stats, more stats, more stats. Okay. Indoor 2020. We have the 60-meter hurdles. I see that you advanced to nationals. Is that yeah. correct? And long jump, right? And the 4 by 2 relay? Yeah. All right. Tell me about that. Tell me all about it. Nationals and indoor. Let's go. So nationals actually got canceled the night we were about to leave. What the heck? Because of what COVID. So I didn't actually get to experience that. But this past year, I got to go to indoor nationals at Virginia. So right. that was kind of fun being able to still experience like a national meet with like people from other places. Because it was, that one was intimidating. That one was hard because... There are these girls that were going like SEC, like yep. big. They could go probably professional at yes. where they already were. So it was kind of, kind of crazy. But I was able to kind of get myself and like I know I'm here for a reason. Right. Um, the four by two this year, it was a lot of younger girls, so it was a new experience because they had never run at a big place like that. Right. So it was a lot of fun to kind of teach them what they should do and like how to handle the pressure so it was a lot of fun to like be with these new girls and kind of get a feel of them and like get to know them as I got to know them in the right. spring season right uh long jump was kind of fun because I beat the girl that was like the three-time state champion amen to that sister <laughs> she <laughs> she actually fouled all three of her jumps so I was kind of like because you intimidated her thanks right? a little <laughs> bit but you brought the tiger out <laughs> I guess a little bit yeah so I got to know this because, you know, I ran indoor two in college and I don't like it because the track, it's, 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 you got to run more laps. It's not fun. Yeah. Right. So how did that indoor atmosphere compare to the outdoor atmosphere? Now, was it a 200 meter track, a 300 meter track? I know it kind of goes both ways. So it was at Spire and that's kind of like a 300 meter track. And I kind of like it more because it there you feels go. shorter. Okay. okay. It feels shorter. And you, when you run it at like 200 meter tracks, it's one lap. And that's kind of weird, but it's kind of like, right. it feels so much shorter than this track does. Right. So Hey, different like opinions. It. I love it. I love it. I yeah, don't know I why. Like it was it. something about it, but it's probably because yeah. I had to run an 800. Yeah. So you know how that goes. Yeah, do. yeah, good times. But uh, so outdoor, 2021. Here we go. Here we go. Here it comes. So you set the high jump record, five, six and a half. Yeah. What the heck? That's awesome. Uh, broke the previous one from 2016. That was five, six. Yeah. So you can jump over me. Congratulations. That is awesome. No, that's that's awesome. That Thank takes you. a lot. That takes a lot. What I was most impressed with, and I told pretty much everybody I knew when I wrote this article about you, you were at the top in five different categories in the ECC. Oh my gosh. Like, so you had the 100 meter dash, you had the 200 meter, you had the 100 meter hurdles, the high jump, and the long jump. Yeah. How, like, how does that feel? That's unreal. Your senior season. Yeah. It was kind of crazy to, like, kind of feel that way because I had, like, felt like I was in a good place. And, like, I never thought I would jump that high and high jump. So it was kind of crazy because I was like, whoa, this is different. And Coach Laughlin was like, you feel – you look good today, so let's maybe amp it up. And then it just happened. I was like, whoa, because it was, like, our season opener. So yeah. it was kind of crazy. Yeah. But I feel good, like – Plus, I had the opportunity. But something crazy is Michaela broke my 300 hurdle record and won ECC this Let's year. Let's go! <laughs> what, what was the time? What was the time? It was, I believe, 47.44, something like that. Was 40, but it, was it 45? It was 47. 47. But it was good. It was no, I know that's good. I know that's good. Believe thing. me. When, when a girl ran 49, it was good. So 47 <laughs> is good. That's So 
How did you guys feel? I mean, in five categories. You know, we're gonna talk about the injury later. I don't wanna put a cloud over our horizons here, but let's talk about her success this year. Anybody can talk. Well, or you guys can go, just talk together. It doesn't go unnoticed. I mean, uh, we, we go to, you know, with obviously meets and coaches talk a lot. There's a lot of downtime at meets. Right. So we do have a lot of opportunity to talk to folks. And yes, yeah, certainly uh, everybody wanted to know where she was going and what she's up to next. And uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's quite interesting. Uh, she could have had her own publicist, and that person could have worked full time, probably, well, especially at the meets, because right. every coach wanted to know what was going on with her. I mean, in today's day and age, unlike when we ran, when we were in school, we didn't see all these stats from mm -mm. all these schools from everywhere. Nope. Now nothing, nothing is uh, hidden from anyone. Right. So right. the second they run well at a meet, within a matter of seconds, the kids are on their phones looking yep. at the results on their, the meet, and they know. So there was a lot of folks following Maya this year, that's for sure. Oh yeah, and. What was your favorite event to watch her in? What would you say? What you? Oh, what I'm, do you think? I'm the high yeah, jump coach. It was high, high jump. jump. Let's go. Yeah. You're not a high jump coach. You don't look like one. Uh, it's high jump. Why was it? But obviously the coaching aspect, but why Why was it so fun to watch her do that? Uh, it was fun to watch her in any event. I mean, it was just, it was poetry in motion watching her jump. Oh, and I then, love that. Poetry yeah, in motion. and then she would come off there and glide over the hurdles. Just a natural, gifted athlete. So any event was fun to watch her in, but I was down at high jump a lot, so I enjoyed my time with her there. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right, so I, I've come to some more stats here. So before we did this interview, looked on the mile split. Your dad also let me in a little bit too. <laughs> so at one time, you were ranked eighth in the 200, third in the 100, second in high jump, and sixth in long jump. With all those rankings, 14th in the state in the 100 meter, and you only ran it once. What the heck? <laughs> like, is Mayo split lying or is this real? I guess. <laughs> I I don't know. I just was like, so one of my friends actually runs at Milford, and she and I train in the off season so much together, and I was like, Coach Brandt, can I please go to this meet just so I can run with her for once? And when my friend saw it, she was like, you better not be. And it was just fun to, like, run against her and also – beat her a little bit but you can admit it she you're a competitor. she's someone that like I like to be around and like someone that I think she like kind of like bounces off me a little bit right. so watches what I do and is like oh maybe I should do that and like I'm always giving her pointers like hey make sure you do this and this and leadership so it's fun to like be able to have friends from other schools that I compete compete with and it's still like a healthy like fun environment so. right right so I don't want to talk about it but we gotta because people are gonna wonder you know why wasn't she the athlete of the year you we were basically <laughs> but you know with the rules and regulations tell me about the injury um, I know it was what a, a grade three on your is it fibula and tibia is that what it was Yeah, fibula and tibia. tell me about that how'd it feel I mean I know it took you out but you were still rooting your people on from yeah. the sidelines tell me about it and how you bounced back man I mean you you look good you look good <laughs> thanks so it was um, it felt like shin splints at first because I usually get them really bad and then it like started to move to like the side of my leg and I was kind of like hmm this is not normal and it would hurt a lot after I ran. And like one day with Coach Williams, I was like, I have to stop. Like, I don't know what it is, why it's this way. And I like, my parents like say, I never pull out of races. Right. But at our home meet, I had to pull out of the 200 and then we got a MRI and it was not what I was expecting. Right, But right. it sounded like when my parents said it, it sounded like nothing was wrong. And I said, so nothing's wrong? And they're like, oh no, there, there is. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was emotional, but it's nice to see that I had committed and like I'm able to go Still run go. another yep. four year, four or five years. Yep. So, so are we good now? Do we have some rehabilitation? What's going on? Um, so I'm in like rehab right now, okay. and I'm doing like lifting and stuff so my body can start to build Amen. back up. Yep. But I can't run. I'm running only on a no gravity treadmill, so it's okay. no pressure. But I've been like picking it up a lot, like a being able to run faster with no pain. Right. So. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. So how did you feel when she was injured? I mean, did that break your heart? I mean, being good friends with her and seeing how hard she works and even being the leader to you and you looking up to her as kind of a role model. I mean, yeah, I look up to her a lot, especially in hurdles and high jump and all the other events. So when she came to us and was like, listen, guys, I'm not going to be able to run our ECCs, it was it was a shock. It was kind of unexpected. 
but um, uh, the good part about our team is we can kind of pick up certain pieces and put everything back together and she was still an amazing leader in helping us with the championships and everything she just because she was injured doesn't mean that she stepped back and right. gave up she right. still was definitely giving it her all even if that it that meant that she wasn't running every single day man that takes some mental toughness it does it prepares you for Iowa though right so got a couple more questions and they're really fun ones guys so <laughs> we're gonna go around Oh, no. And we're going to talk about what's your favorite memory. Oh, the man. short version, of course. Okay. Your favorite memory with Maya here. Oh, my gosh. State meet. We're warming up down in the spur. In the <laughs> and we're, she's, the girls' race is the first race. And there's a bunch of boys down there warming up, and one of them had her in particular lane. And she turns around and gives me a look. Ooh. Like she's like she, you can tell she's really upset, and so and uh, so, but we we you know get past her. So we're loosening up, and you know the nerves are high, and, and Coach Bram will tell you. And so she's getting ready to run. We go up and sit in the stands, and the parents are there. And I said, uh, they said, well, is she ready to go? And I said, oh yeah, she's ready to fight everybody down there. She's ready to go. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 there's just certain people like you know, their competitive spirit oh, yeah. in the races, and it was funny. So for the for the remainder of her career, if I uh, thought she was ready to fight somebody, I knew she was going to run well. Oh, okay, yeah. hey, there you go, aggression. Once again, you're a tiger, right? Forever and always. What about you? Oh, there are so many of them. I bet there is. <laughs> Which one am I allowed to share, Maya? <laughs> Whatever not is kid friendly. <laughs> no, just no, no. She's just a great teammate, and whenever she comes off the track, just watching her congratulate everybody else on the track. Um, she, you know, she's friends with everybody on the track. You know, the, from different schools, and the officials would come up afterwards and just talk about how great of an athlete she was, and and that that dedication and that personality, and that's going to take her far in college too. Wow. So. Wow. What about you? There's a ton. Uh, the smile on the face after breaking records. And I know this is going to sound strange, but my favorite memory of her will be how she responded after the injury. So we, I, as, a head, as coaches, we thought maybe she would just slide off to the side and right. kind of roll off into Iowa. She actually amped up her, her commitment and her dedication and became a better teammate. And I've never seen anybody respond to adversity like that. So that's my lasting memory of her of when things were, when she was down, she could have just sat there and felt sorry for herself, but she picked herself back up and said, let's go, and was at, didn't miss a thing, all the way through state. Wow. So that's, that's my lasting memory of her commitment, because uh, she's a great human being, so on and off the track. Man, that means a lot. What about you? There's so many. Um, <laughs> I would say I loved getting to practice during the winter with her, because a lot of the time you'll see people out here, they're running, but you really, don't notice during the winter time how much work people are putting in. She always would put in so much work, especially during uh, Wednesday nights when we would just be doing a bunch of hurdles in the weight room and she's really put in the work to get here. All right, you ready for this? It's my little quick fire. We're doing three questions, okay? okay? <laughs> First question, favorite event? Oh, um, probably hurdles. <laughs> hurdles, which one, the 100? <laughs> yeah, not the 300. Okay, no. okay, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> when they told me I could go back in the 200, I probably shed a tear of happiness. There you it go. It was the best day of my life. There you go. <laughs> Second question, what are you going to accomplish at Iowa? What's the goals? Mm, probably being a Big Ten champion and going to nationals and placing at nationals. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Yeah. And then? Five years from now, where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? Uh, I probably want to go to the Olympics, but that's going to be a lot, so I really need to like prepare myself if I want to do that. Something crazy is the girl that actually just won the heptathlon for the Olympic trials yes. is someone that I have talked to personally and someone like that I look up to that does that professionally. And like she's always giving me tips about how to like handle my anxiety when I don't feel like I'm where I'm supposed wow. to be. So it's really nice to like have that person that's going to that that can also like kind of teach me how to get to that point. Wow. And then I lied. We're going to ask another question. <laughs> Right now, watching the Olympic trials, because you know I'm obsessed, I'm sure you are too. <laughs> Who's your favorite athlete that's made the team thus far? You know, obviously track and field. Uh, the person I just talked about, her name's Annie Coons. Mm -hmm. So she's what my favorite. What school she from again? She went to Texas A&M, I believe. Okay. She okay. was a two-sport athlete, so she did soccer and track. Oh, what so. a beast. What a beast. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, guys, you heard it here first. We have a beast here in Loveland. <laughs> She's going to Iowa. We might see her in the Olympic trials. What is it? Uh, where is it going to be? Is it 
Where's the next one at? Eugene, uh, probably again. Eugene. Probably yeah. Eugene again, yeah. which is a beautiful track. Beautiful yeah. the track. The one year that I get injured, they have a nationals there. As I always keep making jokes to my dad, the one year <laughs> they have it. <laughs> well, it looks like you got to make the Olympic trials then. I mean, I that's the only option at that's this point. That's what the NCAA <laughs> championships are too, so. There you go. You never know. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much, everybody. Thanks for the support thank with so Maya. Much. Thanks for being awesome on and off the track, honestly. I mean, I know you were good at academics too. I just kind of <laughs> stayed away from it, but I know you're smart. She's a smart athlete, guys, okay? So, Maya Brines, remember that name. She's going to do big things. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you next time, Loveland.